Hello, welcome to my show, Oleo. My name is Susan Rushton, and before I go any further, I need to tell you what Oleo means. One definition is the short for olla podrida, which is Spanish for rotten bowl, which includes, which has pretty much everything in the world in it. It has pork in all its iterations, pig's ears, pig's feet, pig's brains, uh, what else, sausage, bacon, that's what I was getting at, uh, as well as chicken, chickpeas, cabbage, carrots, beans, and of course onions and garlic. As I said, it, essentially everything in the world in it except pretzels and parsnips. That's one definition. The other definition is that oleo is what comes in between acts of a melodrama. So you might have somebody juggling, you might have somebody doing a skit, you might have somebody singing, but none of it has anything to do with the melodrama and none of, none of it has anything to do with the other items in the oleo. So in other words, it's apples, oranges, and a monkey wrench. So welcome to my monkey wrench. Today my guest is the um, animal services manager, health and human services at the animal shelter in Auburn. That's the Placer County's animal shelter. Mm -hmm. uh, Katie Ingram. Thank you, Katie, for joining me. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it, Susan. Oh, good. Thank you. And um, I'm tickled that you could make it. Um, and I would like to share my story with you and you. Um, my husband recently started to volunteer at the animal shelter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, well, that's nice. You're going to break your heart, but oh, well, go ahead. Go, go. fine. And, but then he'd come home after, and what he does, what you have, what the organization has trained him to do is, is take these dogs for a walk around the place mm -hmm. um, to, to throw the balls for them, to, to give them some, co some connection with people. Um, t and there's a place inside where, where they can love, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> more, 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 <laughs> more. And, and, and I, the more I hear about this, the, the more delighted I am, the more impressed this is, and, and I went just because mm -hmm. I, I uh, visited the animal shelter, which is relatively new. It's, they had their, they're having their five, they have their five year anniversary in October of this year. They opened in 20, 2016. I went out there on a Saturday and looked around and I don't think I've, I'd ever been to the, the animal shelter in Placer County. I've, been, I've lived in other counties, and, and every time I went to one, it was, no, I can't come back here, mm -hmm. because they were dirty, they were loud, they were, they were, they were stressful dogs, mm -hmm. stressed dogs, barking every time, all the time, all the time. Yeah. And this wasn't like that. Some, there, there is barking, mm -hmm. but, oh, hello! Who are you? <laughs> and and it's clean and and all of them have get to, to get to uh, lie down on on clean uh, blankets, mm -hmm. which are donated. Yeah, you can one can be one can volunteer. One can donate quilts and bl blankets and sheets and stuff. And I was just overwhelmed. How how and how pleased and how. It's a it's a lovely place. Yeah. The address for the uh, for the animal shelter is one one two three two B Avenue, and it's easier to find if you Google Google it, and and you you, you can do that. Um, and if you're interested in, uh, in approaching Katie, you can email her at K I N G R A M. That's her. her First letter of her name and Ingram is her last name at placer.ca.gov. Um, and you can give her a phone call, 530-886-5513. So why are you involved with animal services, Katie? 
gosh, you know, it's interesting that you tell that story about your husband wanting to volunteer and your impressions of shelters when you've been to visit them. Yeah. Um, the reason why I'm involved in the work that I do is because in high school up here in Orangevale, they offered credits, high school credits, to volunteer at an animal shelter. Mm -hmm. So I started off at 15 or 16 volunteering at the Sacramento SPCA. Okay. Um, became a dog trainer, put myself through college doing that. Wow. Um, which was great. I got to do what I love and also go to school at the same time. And um, But back in the, that era when I volunteered, shelters were old, they were a bit outdated, they were loud, they were all of the things that you mentioned, and most of the shelters I visited as a kid up here were like that. Mm -hmm. um, after college, I had this really unique opportunity to start with a shelter in Southern California as their volunteer coordinator, and it was like, perfect. I had this love of dogs oh, and this and, knowledge of training and, and experience. People who love dogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a degree in public relations. So um, I had this unique opportunity to start at a shelter that really, really needed help. That shelter was very much like what you described. Mm -hmm. It was very noisy. It was all outdoors, but it was filled with passionate people that wanted to make a difference. Okay. Um, but we realized pretty early on, people came in with an impression of what we do based on how the facility looked. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe they didn't want to stay there or it was uncomfortable or yeah. sad. Um, so we did a lot of great things down there. But when I saw that Placer County was building a new excuse, shelter. Excuse yeah. me, what, what great things did you do down there? Oh, good question. <laughs> so we did, um, we increased our volunteer program down there from, gosh, probably 50 volunteers when I started to over 600. Uh, we built a foster program for our underage kittens that we hadn't had before. Mm -hmm. um, so we saved thousands of kittens every year that may not have had opportunities yeah. to be saved. Um, we worked with the community groups to expand our uh, events and programs and our outreach. We worked with the Anaheim Angels and did events there at their oh, stadium. Boy. Oh, so wow. it yeah. was it was kind of this unique so opportunity you've got to build. Great experience. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. So I loved it. I yeah. love that shelter. Um, but we were definitely old and. Uh -huh. Uh, Placer County had this opportunity that my husband pointed out mm -hmm. um, to become a manager up mm -hmm. here. I was an assistant director down there. Uh -huh. um, I really didn't want to leave that shelter because I loved what we were doing. But when I drove by this beautiful new facility here in Placer County uh, and saw what was being built for the animals in our community, I couldn't say no. It was just clear that Placer County really wants to invest in animal services um, at the time. And now that I work here, it's I know that how much the county wants to invest in animals. Um, and not just the animals, but their owners and the people in the community yeah. that um, can use services that we provide um, without their pets coming to the shelter. So for me, that's kind of how I got involved. I started at a young age, but um, had opportunities to see how much we can change and grow, even at an outdated facility, and then have this incredible opportunity to take what the county has built and expand our programs here from the ground up yeah. and, and really have a huge impact on Placer County and their residents. Yes, and I do believe you're having a, a, a huge impact on Placer County and the residents. Yeah. When <clears throat> I chose not to uh, visit the, the the animal shelter before before the new one was built mm -hmm. and but I was I kept a pro, I kept being hearing discussions about uh, the building of the of the new animal shelter mm -hmm. and it's not a cheap place it wasn't cheap yeah. to build and the, what I kept hearing from the people who didn't approve of it was oh, there was all that money for animals mm -hmm. but you go there, and I'm, I was immediately proud of this county. Proud. I live in a place that will do this for animals. It's a beautiful area, beautiful place. Mm -hmm. Outside, inside, clean everywhere. It, it was just a lovely, lovely place. And I'm, I keep being proud of where I live. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the reasons, Yeah, this gets to be another reason why I'm proud. <laughs> yeah, and it, I think it's interesting you bring that up, that I, there's not all, there are not 
always people who um, understand where you know county money or tax dollars are being spent and certainly um, there were questions about the new facility mm -hmm. um, that being said the previous facility we had dramatically outgrown our communities um, in Placer County are exploding and yeah. we have new homes and yeah. Um, it was built 40 years ago and with or no, much uh, yeah. few, many fewer animals. And, yeah, and, and, and more for rabies control, less yeah. about, you know, the origins of shelters is, was really about stray dogs running loose that could be rabid, yeah. that could bite people. Mm -hmm. And so it really wasn't built for adoption, spay and neuter, microchipping, um, reuniting lost pets the way that our new facility is. And it really wasn't built for the animals. So all that barking and smell and noise and mm. darkness um, really is destructive for animals mental state yeah um, and so after a couple of days you would see pets that came in perfectly happy that would just deteriorate where the new facility was built built with modern standards mm -hmm. all of those exercise yards and opportunities for volunteers and kind of smaller pods for dogs where you don't hear all that barking right allows us to keep them healthier and happier for much right. longer until we find them a home. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well worth it, I think. Yeah. Well worth the money spent. Yes. So, so I, I'm assuming that this place is continually improving. Yeah. Uh, what, is, what is your next project? So we have a few. Gosh, I um, one thing I love about this field is that we do get to be really creative. There are definitely laws that we follow and state mandates and those kinds of things, but there's a lot of opportunity for creativity. Um, some of the things that we're focusing on now are uh, we've built some partners here. We have a partner with the PetSmart and a partnership with the PetSmart in Auburn, where we now adopt cats from their store, um, and we're looking to expand that partnership and start doing more off-site adoption events for our dogs um, down there. Um, the animals we take to that store tend to get adopted within a day or two days, yeah, even seconds sometimes. So, yeah. um, so those like, partnerships are huge. Oh, um, we're building some new structures in our play yards to provide more shade for dog walkers mm -hmm. during the summer so dogs can get out of the shelter more right. often. Right. Um, we have some programs we're working with UC Davis right now and their um, shelter medicine program um, to look at some of the different ways that we're bringing animals in and potentially provide more resources to the community like spay neuter, vaccination, food, supplies that will help animals stay in their homes with their owners versus coming into the shelter. Mm -hmm. And then we've looked at ways we can use tech, new technology. Um, and that's a big push right now is... For example? So we've been talking a lot about our officers that um, animal control offices okay. that kind of drive around in their trucks and uh -huh. um, they'll pick up stray dogs um, or lost dogs and bring them to the shelter. Uh, and then our first goal is really to find their owners. Um, but we've looked at other programs and some of those programs are actually um, utilizing technology for their officer to then post, you know, a digital a, a sign in the neighborhood where they found it and then upload those things onto next door so that they can hopefully get the animal back into the, the next door home is, before. Is, uh, is online. Okay. Yes, yeah. yeah. So kind of those tools to keep them in the neighborhood back home before they ever have to come to the okay. shelter. Uh, the nice thing with that is then we don't have to use shelter resources for animals that can just go back home. Sure. Um, and we can save those resources for pets that are maybe injured or need a little bit more to find the perfect home. Yeah. So. Now I'm, and I'm assuming that you you are, if you are of a certain age, um, you if you are thinking about dog catchers and and uh, animal shelters, and, and we we've, we've made I, both of us have made this clear as we've been talking, this, this is not your grandfather's uh, animal shelter, it's not your grandfather's dog catcher, right? Right. The message I, we all received years ago is that, well, bye, dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's been kind of tough sometimes, too, because that that's the message that we, um, even as a, a agency, shared. You know, hey, gather up all the loose animals and bring them to us. And um, what we've really found is that um, by doing that, we are helping animals get home, of course, and adopting, but we're potentially using resources we didn't need to use, like I mentioned, with just get them back home in the field. Yes. Um, we put people on a path to see us as the dog catcher or the pound or mm -hmm. some of those kind of older terms instead of the 
um, services, the resources yes. we can provide. Yeah, the yeah animal services. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think more and more people are now realizing that they can come to us for a variety of things, not just adoption or to pay a fine or mm -hmm. get a license, that we actually um, provide so much more to help people be even better pet owners or to support them yeah. again if they need something for their pet. So now I've we had we we did talk a lot when I contacted you. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned that there's uh, uh, that some some dogs do get put down, mm -hmm. but not as many as there used to be. Yeah. How many dogs? How many dogs? Are st st still kicking yeah. as a result. Oh, um, um, so we've what yeah. Percentage? Good. I mean, it's a great question. Yeah. I would probably say that's the number one question that people ask um, myself and my staff when they start getting to know us, either as volunteer or coming in the door. Is mm -hmm. you know how many animals are you saving and what's mm -hmm. happening? Um, so at our old facility, we. We talk in terms, it's called live release rate or save rate, kind of. You'll mm -hmm. see that a lot when shelters talk about success. Um, at our old shelter, we were saving about 77% of the animals that we housed. Which is which pretty good. was still pretty good yeah. for a government-run shelter. Yeah. Um, the new facility with our expanded programs with this better Tell design. Them. Oh, the new <laughs> facility, we're saving, we saved 94% of our animals wow. last year. So, huge. I mean... And that's in just five short years, and we saw that shift really within the first year. How did that happen? What 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 did you do differently? So we did a variety of things. I think um, you know, number one, people were more willing to come through our front door that may have been afraid of the previous facility or, or overwhelmed, maybe to, to um, come to uh, adopt. Yeah, okay. so more people coming to adopt. Um, we we've done creative things like. Uh, adoption discounts. So several times throughout the year, we'll mm -hmm. waive adoption fees or offer supplies. Um, we've waived redemption fees for owners that have lost a pet. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes, if it's the first time that dog or cat has come in, we'll waive the fee to get that pet back home. Mm -hmm. um, we have a partnership with a group called Kitten Central, and they um, are in uh, Newcastle, and they basically take all of our neonatal little bottle feeding kittens that come in and they have foster homes that raise them. Oh wow! Um, and that's something I think folks may not be aware of when we talk about save rate. Those little baby kittens really can impact a shelter because we don't have the 24 hour cares <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at the time. Yeah. So that program has been life changing for cats and kittens um, along with the partnerships with PetSmart and um, and more strategically, I think we're looking at the way we're bringing animals in and being strategic about it, like scheduling appointments for people who can't keep their pets versus mm -hmm. just having them all come in at once and then we're overwhelmed and can't give them the resources mm -hmm. they need. Uh, we also hired a great veterinarian who does extensive surgeries for us. So animals that have medical needs before that we couldn't save are now able to be saved because we have the resources and the skilled professional oh, that can do it. So it's it's been kind of an incredible <clears throat> shift and I tell people all the time it's it's the same staff. I mean outside of me and a couple of folks that um, were hired uh, as the new facility was being built, our animal care staff and our officers are the same staff that worked at the old shelter. Okay. But if you give them the resources and the tools and the right facility, they can really do incredible things yeah. and that's what we've seen happen. Yeah. Um, they're just, they think of creative programs and ways that they can market animals. And um, in addition, our volunteer program, you know, your, your folks like your husband mm -hmm. that are willing to come in and get to know the pets and talk to people about them and get them out of the cage and keep them happy. Um, it's been huge. I, you know, more of those animals stay for longer, but they're happy the whole time. They're not having that deterioration yeah. that we talked yeah. about before. Yeah. So. And my husband says that he, there's, <clears throat> you, he's not just, he wasn't just tossed in there to, <laughs> to, 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 oh, well, okay, hi, dog. Um, but the, he was trained, had at least two sessions and, yeah. and maybe th I think three and, and um, there are levels of dogs that he, he should, uh, that he's, he has, can have access to and the more, the more, um, experience he is with with the a b dogs mm -hmm. um 
the more he might be willing to and ready to visit the sea dogs. Yeah. Um, and and this is he, he's he's being and and there's yeah it's it's he comes home every day, every time he's he's volunteered and and guess what I did? Guess who I saw? And and he's he's. He did the right thing. He's, yeah. I'm convinced. And what What made him want to become a volunteer? Was there something he saw, or well, just he, an interest? We've been talking about getting a dog for a couple of years. Yeah. After, yeah. and um, uh, and he he's been on on the website, the website, uh, placer.ca.gov slash nineteen oh nine slash animal services. There are all the dogs that are available to be adopted. All the kittens and cats too, and chickens. <laughs> yeah, and maybe even a goat or two yeah. sometimes. Okay. So. But he, he was he, he was looking through and he at, at all the all the pictures, and on the sides of these pictures are all these uh, want want to volunteer want to do this want to donate want to and and so he decided to investigate oh, I'm so glad I'm yeah, glad me too and I would imagine that um, there are quite a few of our volunteers that found us that way and sure. I I tell you it's um, volunteers are critical for what we do we uh, hearing even that he's moved through those training levels mm -hmm. with dogs there are even opportunities to work with special needs dogs um kind of going back i guess to the uh, piece about the live release rate and what we've done differently uh, that's something we weren't doing a lot of before is working with dogs with minor or even you know medium behavior issues that um, they may not have had a second chance at our shelter mm -hmm. before they may not have second chances at other shelters but mm -hmm. we have a committed group of volunteers and staff that um, work on those behaviors, so they'll do training and um, kind of modify behaviors, use treats, uh, teach them some manners so that they yeah. can go and be successful in a new home. Um, and I mean, at the end of the day, those are dogs that five years ago we may have said, oh gosh, there's no hope to change them, yeah. and now we're seeing that they really do great once they get out of the shelter and they get in a home. So we learn we learn ourselves through these processes of trial and error and new programs. That's um, wonderful. How to save more animals. So, yeah, it's wow. great. It's rewarding. It's very rewarding. That's that's great. Yes. Why do most animals find their way to animal services? I'd say the majority of them are lost. Um, more often than not, it's like someone left a door open or a fence fell down in the rain. Mm -hmm. um, so they're generally, you know, animals people really care about that are secured yeah. and they've just gotten loose. Um, and so those are the ones that either the community will find and recognize, oh gosh, this is a lost dog yeah. or cat, bring it to the shelter or officers will pick up. Right. Um, there are some that we bring in from other shelters when they're full Mm -hmm. Or we'll swap like, oh gosh, you have a lot of black cats, and you know we have a lot of um, gray cats. Let's let's swap okay. them. Um, and then there are some that owners just can't keep anymore, mm -hmm. and those are the ones that um, we tend to look at creative ways to try to help an owner keep their pet. Um, it, sometimes it's a behavioral issue we can fix, or a fencing mm -hmm. issue we can fix. Mm -hmm. um, but we do see probably fifty or sixty dogs and cats a month that um, owners can't keep that we either take in or find another resource for or help them stay. Fifty in the or home. sixty a month. Yeah. Wow. So it's pretty significant yes. the number. Uh, it's part of why we do so much with the education of what to expect when you adopt when you get a pet, you know, what the commitment looks like, what resources are available because um, sometimes we see folks that have, you know, got a puppy or a kitten. They were so cute, and now they're a teenage puppy and kitten, and they're driving them crazy. You, you can't know? tell me what to do. You're not the boss of me. Yeah. <laughs> so we help work, help people understand that's part of the process, and, sure. and work through those things versus just giving up or feeling overwhelmed and, and leaving them at the shelter. Yes, yes. So it's a mixed bag of what we take in. Sure. Yeah. Um, so. Here's my question about uh, what question do you wish people would ask but don't? Yeah, I you know I thought I thought of, have been thinking about that a lot just in general mm -hmm. that um, I'm always challenging myself and my staff to think of creative ways to get the 
community more involved with what we do, mm -hmm. um, help educate folks of how we've changed or you know what programs we're rolling out so that they can spread the good word. And I, I, it seems like an obvious question that that I would like people to ask, but it really is. You know what what can I do to plug in and help or um, you know I. I hear these stories, right? Oh, I was on your website and I saw the volunteer page or um, I saw a plea for donations, but we're not often approached by folks who just wanna, wanna help, you know, mm -hmm. or what program can, can I promote? Um, so it's not so much even about me, it's really just asking the community to think of ways that they can help the shelter or encouraging uh, them to come to the shelter and ask what we're working on that they can plug into. Okay. Um, people have connections in the community. They may have groups that they work with that they can talk about adoption to or share updates on our programs. Um, and that helps to build that larger base, I think, of supporters and uh, a, be a better understanding of what we're trying to do as a shelter. Now, are you available for uh, 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 like lions or, or yes to speak yeah to nonprofit organizations we would love that and and really the pandemic kind of stopped stopped that oh, right yeah. Yeah. and so we're really looking for ways to get back into that world and um, speak to community groups uh, I think about disaster response a lot that we we're the one of the first agencies that gets called when there's a fire um, flooding mm -hmm. um, we rescue animals in those situations but um, if we can get in front of that and help people become better prepared with their pets for a disaster it would mean we have to respond to less calls because they're ready to evacuate sure. they have all their resources so, so those you, kinds of talks would be great too so you are available yep um, to talk to uh, uh, P uh, groups of any sort, any 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 size, right? Any um, age, <laughs> any age. Um, you're willing to go to schools? Yes, absolutely. Good. Excellent. So, if you want a speaker, correct? Yes. If yeah. you want a speaker, consider Katie Ingram, uh, Animal Services Manager of uh, Health in Health and Human Services. Contact her at placer.ca.gov. No, you, you, yeah, you can investigate. Uh, Placer.ca.gov slash 1909 slash animal services or give her a call 530-886-5513 or email Kingram, K-I-N-G-R-A-M at Placer.ca.gov if you want to learn more and if you want to have her come and tell you more. Yeah. Yes. I'd love to. Great. Um, so, also, you you are you you are eager for. There's no such thing as too many volunteers. Correct. Right. right. Yes. <laughs> okay. And the more volunteers we have, the more um, new programs we can really support because they're you know I can't hire 30 new staff, but if I have 30 new volunteers, they can find creative ways to help us um, expand on the okay. programs we're trying to okay. start. It's a great point. And you, you're you eager for, you're willing to accept donations. Yes. Money, of course, always money, but those, there are, there are blankets in there that were donated. Mm -hmm. Food? Food, uh, yeah, food, supplies, used old Dog toys, leashes, collars, um, all of that will get used at the shelter. And uh, beyond the shelter, we give back to the community. So like I mentioned, if someone is struggling and can't provide food for that month, then we use those donations to help support people to be able to keep their pets. Oh, what a place. <laughs> we love it there. We're here for the community. Yeah, I know pets. that. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Well, Katie, it has been wonderful to talk with you. Thank you. I'm so pleased you said yes at, 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 at short notice. Thank you very much. Um, this has been just a great pleasure for me. Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 it, it makes, and as I said, it makes me so proud to live where I do. <sighs> thank you, place. Susan. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Thanks for helping spread the good word. You're welcome. We're doing. And thank you, Katie. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again.